In this episode of Miniature Landscape Hobbies, we're going to talk about how to paint metal infantry. Whenever I produce videos on 15mm infantry, they tend to be my most popular. And now is a really good time to cover the subject, because with the release of the new Bagration Axis Allies book, Battlefront has reintroduced a lot of metal infantry kits. Now, I feel like before I get into my painting techniques, I need to address an elephant in the room. And that is that painting either metal or plastic infantry can lead to some pretty heated debates amongst model builders. You see, there are some camps that are pretty loyal to one type or the other. So before we really get down to business on the painting side of things, let's look at some of the key differences between the two types of kit. Plastic models come in a couple of different grades, being either hard or soft plastic. And of course, they also come in metal. They can be all quite different in character, and the dimensions can vary, but they all conform roughly to the 15mm, or what is thought of as 1-100 scale. And if you are uninitiated in the hobby, that's pretty small. Metal models are generally known to be favored for their weight, and arguably more realistic proportions. They're usually older in design, and are made of the more specialized types, because their molds lend themselves to smaller production runs. Plastic models, of course, are lighter, and tend to be more heroic in scale. That is, the proportions are exaggerated slightly, usually to emphasize the type of unit the model belongs to, or to bring attention to the model's face to help enhance visual interest. Okay, so with that out of the way, let's look at how I paint infantry. Uh, what's that? You want to know where I fall in the debate? Well, to be honest, I really just don't care. After cleaning the models up and taking all the flash off with a needle file and a knife, I then hot glue them down to a length of wood and begin to prime them with my airbrush primer. As anybody who watches this channel knows, I'm primarily a terrain guy. So, although I really like painting pretty well any type of model, when it comes to painting infantry, I'm really most interested in getting them maybe just a step above passable for going on the games table. So what you see in terms of my techniques and uh, the finished result will largely reflect how I approach painting infantry. Okay, back to priming. Now, when it comes to priming, metal models really require just a little more attention, and I try to get more than one layer of primer on. This is because, in my opinion, primers just stick a little differently to the metal than they do to the plastic, and you want to make sure that it's not flaking off as you're painting. Also make sure that you change the direction and angle with which you're priming your models so that you get into all the nooks and crannies. Take your time, and with metal models I find you have to be more thorough in general. With the primer dry, I now go ahead and start laying down the base colors. I find with metal models that the folds and textures in the cloth isn't as exaggerated as it is on plastic models, so it lends itself pretty well to a heavy dry brush. Since I'm doing Russian sappers, the obvious choice for my base color is, well, Russian uniform green. So I take that out and dry brush it on. After this layer is dry, I still need a little more highlighting, so I get out Russian Tank Crew Highlight and dry brush that on. I approach it just the same way as before, but make the dry brush just a little bit lighter. 
Now I move on to the body armor and the helmets. I take out German camouflage bright green, which ironically I think makes a pretty good color on Russian models, and go in and paint it over the body armor and put it on the helmets. Then I add a little Vallejo ivory to it and go ahead and paint on a direct highlight with this. I focus on the edges of the armor and the rims of the helmet. Sapper engineers generally wore camouflage, so I get out beige brown and with a really fine brush, go and paint some patches all over their uniforms. After this is set, then it's time to put on a highlight. And this is where I find a crucial difference with uh, metal models from plastic models. With plastic models, again, the folds and the raised portions in their clothing tend to be fairly exaggerated, and you can generally do a really light dry brush to put on the top highlights. With metal models, this just doesn't seem to work. So I mix up a lighter color of the Soviet tank crew highlight, add plenty of white to it to make it really light, and go ahead and paint it on the old-fashioned way by using the tip of the brush instead of taking a shortcut like dry brushing. Now I start work on the flesh tones, and since these are regular rank and file models, I don't go all out on making it look extra good. In fact, I do it pretty simply. I take flat flesh, paint it over their faces and hands, and then give it a wash with Army Painter Flesh Wash. Later on, when all this is dried, I go back and paint on a true highlight using a really fine brush and some light flesh paint. Moving on to the equipment, I get out flat brown and paint it over the pouches and the rifle stocks. I then go ahead and paint a true highlight on with either deck tan or beige brown so that I can vary the colors a bit. Again, if this was a plastic model and things were more pronounced, I'd probably give these areas a local dry brush. But since the detail just isn't there on metal models, I went in and painted them with the tip of my brush. Now I moved my attention to the boots, and this is the easy part because the boots don't need any highlighting. They'll be uh, dry brushed over slightly when I do the bases, so I just paint them German dark gray. Now I can move on to the metal. And I don't really like to use metallics on uh, infantry miniatures, so I paint anywhere that's metal, dark sea gray, and then highlight it with a little bit of blue gray. It's now time to start shading, and I'm going to use enamels, so I decide to put down some varnish to protect the paint. I go ahead and spray the model with some satin varnish. And here's one of those key differences again with metal models, because metal models can chip easier than plastic models and you have a harder time getting the primer to set, I always give it a couple extra layers of varnish, just to make sure that they're going to handle the wear and tear that much better. When the varnish is done, I get out my enamel dark wash, and the process is exactly the same. I thin it down with some thinner until it flows really easily, and then just go ahead and dab it into the dark areas, the creases, and anywhere that's shadowed on the model. I let capillary action spread it out. Then I leave it all to dry. And with this final step, the actual process of painting the models is complete. Now you can go ahead and base them and follow up, follow up with a matte varnish at the end. I've covered this in other videos, so that's where we'll leave it for today. Now I've got a new unit of metal infantry that won't win any awards, but will look just fine on the tabletop. And no matter which side of the metal versus plastic model debate you come down on, these will look just fine any which way. That's it for this episode. Thanks for watching. We have regular coverage for model building on Tuesdays and Thursdays. I'd like to encourage you to check out my Etsy store. It's how I support the channel. The link is in the description. See you next time. And until then, remember, 
to keep building life in miniature.